Welcome to The Edge Podcast presented by The Bluntness. I'm your guest host today, Juliana Whitney, founder and president of Can Strategy and Leaf Sheets. And I am joined today by Zane Witzel, the CEO and founder of Canador and of Vapor Beads. Canador is a premium storage brand that focuses on functional design and balanced humidity for the discerning connoisseur's top shelf collection. Canador products can be seen on shelves from small boutiques to major retailers like Bloomingdale's, which I love. I'm so excited to talk more about that. Uh, And Zane's also owner of Vapor Beads, which one has a patent and two, it's a two-way humidity control product that regulates the relative humidity for cigars and cannabis in your humidor, which these are both amazing, interesting products, have a lot to do with product quality, quality control, mostly for the consumer, right, Zane? Yes, yes. It's mostly uh, B2C. Um, but yeah, no, not like large, don't think like commercial large scale, more like small scale, anywhere from like a few ounces to, you know, six, I think six ounces is like the largest size product that we have in terms of storage. Okay, for the Canador. Yes. Okay. Awesome. And I would love to know a little bit of your backstory, kind of how you got to, you know, I love to know how did someone decide to invent this thing and go this route in this industry? What, what does that trajectory look like for you? It's a pretty odd one um, that doesn't really make a lot of sense, but I originally went to school um, to study television. I wanted to get into entertainment Um, mainly just TV. And I went to Pepperdine University because they've got a great telecommunications program um, and with a lot of resources. Um, And, uh, you know, I was going through that track. I ended up getting a job at a production company at Paramount Picture Studios after graduation. Oh, cool. Um, It it sounds cool, but this was right at around 2009, uh, right right at the worst possible economic time. And a lot of the projects that were being slated for that year got completely rug pulled. Oh. So I was left scrambling then uh, trying to go from job to job, uh, getting commercial gigs, uh, just anything I could possibly get. And I thought, you know what, this is, this is really dragging me down. This is naturally not what I thought it would be. <laughs> right. Like, I thought um, this was going to be like a Hollywood, some kind of movie. Like, duh. Cool. <laughs> duh. <laughs> I didn't want to be that one statistic that just gets rubbed out of Hollywood, like <laughs> lickety split. But it was, it was rubbing me out regardless. Um, I just, it wasn't a fit for me in, in that lifestyle, just constantly going from job to job. Wow. So I, I thought, okay, time to pivot, go back to uh, business school, um, get a business degree. I worked at a consulting firm while I was earning my degree. And I, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I had no clue. I, I mean, some people just know they want to be a lawyer. They want to be a doctor um, and good for them. Um, <laughs> um, way to go, guys. Way to go. But I, I didn't know. Um, and to be honest with you, I still don't know. But anyway, I just knew one thing that was true, and that was that I wanted to start a business. I didn't know what, I didn't know how, I didn't know anything about business. That's why I needed to get a business degree. And it really helped me. I I don't think it helps you if you've already got an entrepreneurial mind, but I didn't. So I needed that reinforcement. And um, I just had, uh, it was a combination of a shower moment. Uh, you know, like you're in the shower, you got an idea. Like this. Yeah, yep. And it was also uh, an aha moment where uh, one night in Los Angeles, I was hanging out with my buddies. We were about ready to go out for the evening, and he pulled out a shoebox, and in the shoebox was all of his tools and weed, just loosely thrown about and then disheveled. It, disheveled and oh, it looked rather, yeah, oh yeah, it looked juvenile to say yeah. the least. <laughs> And so, uh, you know, that kind of sparked my interest. Okay, is there another like storage? How do you keep things organized? Um, Like what what do you do? And at the time, this was now um, 2012, 2013, um, there was nothing. The the market was pretty much empty as far as storage containers concerned, unless you wanted something with 
a Bob Marley logo on it, which, you know, hey, that's fine. I'm not knocking the Bob Marley Rasta thing, but that's all there was, was just the Rasta collection, if you will. Right. So there wasn't really anything that spoke to me personally and my tastes. So that, hence the shower moment. Okay, just do this. Like, just get it out of your head. Yeah. Make a few prototypes and let the market tell you if you're right or you're wrong. So from 2013 to 2014, that was kind of like my first year. Okay. I was looking for any reason for the market to kill this. I was looking for any reason for customers to be like, this is stupid. I don't need like, why the hell would you need this? Yeah. You know, so I was looking for every reason not to continue. Yeah. And here we are nine years later. So, (laughs) you know, that's actually said, I was having a conversation with a guy and all he does is study kind of best business practices and efficiencies and stuff like that. And one of the things he told me is best about founders is the ones who don't seek that what they're making is good. They seek why it's not good. And that way, you know, they, they know faster if it's not going to work um, or they find out it is going to work. But like seeking that, like this is going to fail, like how, how does this not make sense um, is actually a better indicator for success and like helps you make a better product and, and quickly kill bad ideas. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. Because, you know, we don't want to waste our time, money and resources on something that you won't, by the way, and this is the tough part about, you know, well, I guess consumer products, I, don't, I wouldn't know anything about software or services, but it's kind of a slow cancerous death if you don't know it's wrong because yeah. no one's, you know, it's it's just going to be a slow <laughs> process okay. until you, you're left without resources. And then it's like, yeah. okay, now now I have to kill this. Exactly. Um, so I'm all, I was always afraid of dying that kind of slow <laughs> decaying, uh, agonizing, like, yeah. God. Your you know, company is like in hospice. You're right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd rather have the answers now. Um, yeah. That's 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 a great approach. And what was the so clearly you got the answer that the consumer does like this product. What did that look like? What were the first shelves you got it on? What you know kind of was the feedback? How'd that rollout look? Um. It was it was a slow drip actually, so it wasn't exciting at all. It's just a slow drip, drip, drip. Um, mainly online, I started out with like two models, okay, and then added a third. That third sucked. Added <laughs> added a fourth. That fourth was okay, you know. And and yeah. I just kind of just slowly, incrementally did this. Okay, all online at first, so no stores, no. Um, and this was. You know, 2013, 2014, a lot of the dispensaries were just kind of kicking up into, um, you know, a fraction of what they are today. Yeah. You started in California, right? I did. Yep. I started in California. And um, it it wasn't the kind of boom. I think like 2015, 2016 is when it was like, okay, like this is for real now kicking up. Uh, yeah, it was kicking up. And you had more stores and places to sell to that were interested. However, these products are kind of big. They take up a lot of shelf space. Mm. So at the time, these dispensary owners were were not interested in anything that couldn't you know, could move yeah. quickly. They didn't want stuff collecting dust or hanging out. And, and I don't blame them. I mean, right. it's such an expensive business. They had regulatory, uh, retail space, you know, brick and mortar. I mean, they, everything is breathing down their neck. So I, I don't blame them that they, they don't want to carry ancillary <laughs> products. If they do, they're usually small, kind of like grinder, pipe, um, small things like that. But like a big item like this just doesn't fit the bill for a B2B model. So I just started online and I, write it, I wrote SEO articles about this product because we can't advertise. Mm-hmm. Right. Like we got we got blackballed from Facebook and Google and yeah. YouTube especially and then, all of them. Then especially it was even worse than now. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I was you know, I couldn't advertise. And if I could advertise, it was only to cannabis related magazines, which yeah. that's great. But that only really caters to a small slice of the overall population. I mean, there's a lot of people that don't read high times. There's a lot of people that 
Um, you know, don't read, uh, you name it, fill in the blank. Cannabis specific kind of media. And right. it's like you're saying like your target customer too, if the ones who are reading cannabis specific media, especially then were probably the ones who would want the, the typical like cannabis culture, ancillary products, like the Bob Marley, you know, images on their storage container. So if you were going for a different consumer, it then makes sense. You're like, I got to get out of just this, this target. If your target was actually a totally other sub like set of human. Yes. Yes, exactly. I, I, I hate to say it, but I just, I didn't want to drill down too far into the very, you know, cannabis centric. Well, shouldn't you be selling to people? And well, yes, but like, the real customers are people like my dad who's in his sixties, who smoked weed in the eighties and stopped after having a corporate life and then decided, you know, after he retired, Hey, I want to get back into it now that it's legal. Mm -hmm. And there's so many people like my father um, yeah. and, you know, a little bit of an older generation. I don't want to just say it's exclusively boomers. Um, but look, they've got the disposable income. Yeah, uh, they're nearing retirement. They're enjoying cannabis now that it is legal. So they, they make up a huge uh, portion of our my customer base. Okay. Um, and and it is kind of difficult in trying to cater to them as far as like new product development mm -hmm. because they're just kind of getting back into it again. You know, so they're yeah. they're not really like giving me a ton of feedback. It's like my our millennial generation that's just like you should do this you should do that you should change yeah. this you should you know like <laughs> <laughs> the boomers are like this works it's fine yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good <laughs> yep. awesome so then you're doing seo articles you're kind of promoting that way and then do you see is that when you start to see an uptick in business yeah yeah it was like 2017 2018 okay you know i can i can successfully do this full time um which i had been by the way up until that point but it was tough struggle bus. Um, <laughs> yeah i've yeah. been on the struggle bus i may have seen you there the what <laughs> i said i've been on the struggle bus too yeah, I know. yeah 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 like um, I mean, i'm doing this full time but like uh it's uh, barely should i be <laughs> exactly it's questionable if it's advisable right. for me to be doing this yeah so so yeah it was right around that period where revenues were enough to sustain this and go okay um we can do this full time so you know what's the next thing well, I'd like to say the next thing is, you know, the next model, but the truth is, is no, hardly anyone knows about this or has heard about this. Right. So, you know, as much as I want to go balls to the wall here with like giving customers as many options as they, they can, the truth is, is like, I've kind of reached a plateau limit of like all the different configurations and sizes. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, it's just a matter of reaching out to people. Scaling. Um, scale. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. You know, one thing that I did try over the last year and a half was international. So I formed an international partnership to get us distribution in Canada, okay. uh, Europe, and now hopefully Australia is in the cards. Um, so I have that ability to sell products internationally. I get it that, you know, most cannabis uh, leaf touching companies don't. They're literally confined to one state. So I don't oh. have that problem. Yeah. You don't have the borders problem. Right, right. Yeah. Um, so I kind of have gone about it in that fashion. And um, the U.S. is still where it's at. Yeah, yeah. And thankfully, we're opening new markets constantly, especially since 2020. Every state was like, we're broke. Legal. <laughs> Legalize now. Sure, it sure. up so fast, I feel like. Right, yeah. right. And um I was one of the, um, you know, primary beneficiaries of the lockdown. Oh, I and, thought, yeah. You know, everyone did shopping online. So, I mean, it was, it was definitely boomtown for me. And I realized that a lot of brick and mortar companies struggled and suffered. Um, but look, I'm, it's all equalized out now. So yeah. I'm back to pre-pandemic revenues. Yeah. <laughs> um, we all knew that was going to be unsustainable, right? I mean, that was insane. Pendulum. <laughs> Just pendulum, <Right>. you know? <laughs> right. Law of physics. 
Yeah. Interesting. Okay. And so let's dive a little deeper into like the product itself. So this is, you know, we got your business growth, which I love. And now here we are. What I love about your product. So I just got into cigars like okay. last yeah. summer. <laughs> so, yeah. And I was yeah. like, this is fun. Um, and so I'm kind of learning a little bit in cigar culture how special the, you know, the humidors are and keeping everything just like this like perfect balance and quality. And I know so when I do operations with cannabis operators, you know, that's a huge part from the back end when we're cultivating, making products, even storing them at retail side, um, keeping that balance in check. But then once it gets to the consumer, a lot of them aren't educated on that in the same way that like cigar consumers are. So I feel like that's kind of what you're feeding into and almost, uh, have you had to educate people about that? Because it seems like there's the same, same benefit. I have, I have, uh, there's a lot of crossover in terms of like how a humidor works. Um, but there's obviously subtle differences between a cigar humidor and a cannabis humidor. Yeah. Um, mainly being the interior, which is, uh, you know, cigar humidors use Spanish cedar, which is kind of a spicy wood and it. It can influence the taste of your cigars. You obviously don't want that influencing the taste of your weed. Uh, yeah. So I went with like a more yeah. neutral wood like mahogany. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but then in terms of like humidity, so the humidity range for cigars is a little higher, um, not by much, uh, like we're, t we're talking like three, four, five percentage points um, versus flower, which is lower. Um, I, we mainly focus on ranges, which would be like 58 to 68 max. Um, and, it, and it then even depends on how you're consuming it. So if you're vaporizing it, you probably want it in the the um, low 60s, high 50s, because you'd have to draw more, you know, if you give it too much moisture. But if you're rolling a joint or smoking a bong, um, you know, you can have it a little bit on the higher end. But yeah, there's a lot of there's not a lot of um, education I need to go through for, like I said, that boomer crowd because they get it. They've smoked cigars. Yeah. But like, but like my generation, our generation, uh, you know, we're younger. We're just kind of getting into it. Um, and I myself, uh, only a couple of years ago, started getting into cigars. So, you know, there's a there's a little bit of a um, education process needed for the for the younger crowd. It's a whole art. Yes, it's like an entire art, and then you have to. And also, there's some like sophistication to it. I feel like you have to care. <laughs> like a lot, we're not yet like a lot of the I guess younger. I don't even know if I count as younger anymore. I'm like, are millennials still the younger crowd? I, we're at least younger than boomers, but we're still yeah. getting that. Like, we care about a lot of things, but I'm not so sure we're to the like refined in terms of like cigars and like caring for your cannabis at home. You know, we're rolling around to that. Yes. Um, so <laughs> I could see that being a thing. Um, how's that going? Are people, are they like interested in it? Absolutely. I think there are some people that just get it. And then there are some people that are like, you know, why, why do I need um, a Porsche when uh, a Honda Civic can get me to my, you know, there, you know, so there's always there's those people that are like, well, why would you need that? You know, and right. You know, the truth of the matter is you, <laughs> you don't, I mean, there are obviously many other ways to, um, store your cannabis and keep it fresh. Uh, you can go the, the simple, cheap, easy way. You can go the mediocre way. You can go the expensive way. So I never tried to couch myself as some sort of luxury thing. I just didn't want to. I mean, if you look at the prices, these are very reasonable. I mean, our lowest price item is like $150. So for a humidor with all of this, for with a 12 month warranty and the humidity control device that comes with it, Plus you get all the different lids and accessory things that you need just to maintain it. Wow. I mean, for that price point, I don't really know what else you're looking for. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I don't consider myself luxury the right. least bit. Um, you, if you want a solid wood humidor, you can spend upwards of a grand just for, you know, I think there's companies out there that specialize in making humidors cut out of one single piece of wood. Mm. So you, you can, you can go that route and be, as fancy as you want, but I'm, I've never really considered myself 
in that in that ultra luxury, you know, I think, remember there was uh, Barney's was starting like weed or something like that in New York City. Yeah. Was, yeah, it was, it was like, it was. I, some, it. I do remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, I just kind of looked at that and I thought, well, hey, you got to cater to everybody. There's a customer yeah. out there for that. But weed really isn't a luxury thing. It's weed. <laughs> it's, yeah. I know. Yeah. Um. You know, and, and, and I'm, yeah, I'm sure you've spoken with a lot of people who actually do cater to that. So I'm not trying to diminish it or minimize it. Um, I'm just kind of pointing out that, you know, there's really only so far you can go with this. Right. Um, it's so, more utility. You're more like, this is super useful and there's benefits to it. Yes. And it gives you a little of like, for me, it would be an elevated experience. The first thing you mentioned is that shoe box, which is, you know, we all know of it. We all know kind of that experience. But then is there a better way to do this? Just more operationally efficient and pleasant for my day to day life than having a shoe box or whatever it is that you've got all your stuff in, like yes. having it organized, beautiful, useful is just it just makes sense. It's not so much it has to be some high level thing. It's like this just makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and believe it or not, so along those lines, because I, I know earlier in the in the conversation you wanted to touch upon Bloomingdale's. I don't know if you're going to say that for a later time, but <laughs> it did not it did not take a lot of convincing for them to to make that leap. Because it makes so, sense. So um, <laughs> they they reached out to us, me oh, originally, cool. um, and I was like, "Are you sure you got the right guy?" You know, like. <laughs> This is, these are weed boxes. This is for <laughs> weed. And they were like, yes, yes, yes. We, we, we want to carry this in our stores. And, I, and uh -huh. you know, at first I was very dismissive because I'm thinking to myself, like, Bloomingdale's? Like, why? Right. You know, this is a fashion forward, fashion clothing and accessories. So. They're iconic. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, look, they were, they were leaning forward. This was 2019. Okay. Um, uh -huh. When they had first reached out to me, I believe. And uh, they invited us down to their headquarters. So I went down there and I gave a, a pitch to all the salespeople that would ostensibly be selling this in stores nationwide, okay. select stores nationwide, so not all stores. Okay. Um, so I got to educate everybody on how the product works and how customers will respond to it, you know, some of the frequently asked questions that will be given their way. Um, and I got to educate them on that. And like I said earlier, most people were just like, yeah, I, you know, I get it, duh. <laughs> so, so that was kind of unique. Um, you know, first of all, going to New York City and going into their headquarters and, and experiencing all that. So they, they did carry it for uh, the first year. It went really well. Then the pandemic hit. Mm. Um, so there was a pause on, you know, buying merchandise during that period. But then right after the um, pandemic, they were like, yeah, we want to double down. Um, and so they bought they bought more. And wow. yeah. Going. Still there. But, Still but that is, yeah, that is just seasonal. I think I should say that is just seasonal. It's like a seasonal event sort of thing. Um, they put me in their catalog, which is really cool too. Love it. You know, kind of like gift gift ideas, their um, annual catalog for just you know, things to get. Because uh, it's a popular gift item, I will say that. Yeah, I bet. Um, Bloomies. I'm impressed yeah. with them. Look at them. They're like, we're cool. We're hip. Yeah. We're times. Yeah, we they, were, they were leaning very far forward because none of their other retail competitors – are that I know of Catching are getting up. into cannabis accessories. They kind of poo pooed it like, Oh, right. Totally. They're like not willing to kind of adjust. And then, so you've got this Canador model. How'd you get, you also have vapor beads. Yeah. Now I should, I should make it very clear to mm -hmm. listeners that I didn't invent this. You didn't. I, ac okay. I acquired this patent. So okay. I, I originally I originally licensed it uh, in the early days because the product was it works so well first of all so okay. it does exactly what it's supposed to 
and it's sustainable. I like it that you can just dip it in water every week and a half to two weeks, just depending upon how dry your area is. Um, and it's not like a sponge in that it's not going to wick off all of its moisture in one sitting. It kind of, it, it does this. So it's both a desiccant and a um, humidifier. And by adding water to it, it um, kind of maintains a, a little bit of a balance. Okay. So, so it, what does it look like? Because I didn't actually uh, look at this, but in my head, these were beads. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 you're right. It is like a clear box. Think of okay. like a Dove soap bar, the size of a Dove soap bar box. Okay. Um, filled with beads. These beads are uh, white and clear at the same time. Okay. And they're impregnated, they're micropore, there's micropores on these beads yeah. impregnated with a salt based solution. So that's what elevates the humidity when necessary and kind of balances things out. Okay. So and then you put this thing like in what? Any dip it in water. Um, okay. You just dip it in water and put it in your humidor and that's it. That's okay. all you got to do. What if you were to put it in your shoe box? Would it work? Well, yeah, any enclosure, any enclosure okay. that's meant to humidify something, as long as that enclosure is uh, the only thing we don't recommend is this is not a product that you would use in like a plastic container. Okay. Um, it's just too powerful for something like that. Um, so if that that's the case. Mold, maybe. Okay. Yeah, it's just like, so in a humidor setting or like a shoebox, like you said earlier, there's some give and take because the wood will absorb five to 10% of that moisture. Yeah. Um, so there's some give and take with wood, but if you're just putting it in a plastic or glass enclosure that's airtight, I mean, I would recommend Bovita products, which right. is basically like the liquefied version of these beads. So okay. it's kind of like the same chemical elements. I mean, a different combination, but mm -hmm. if, you know, just think high level, it's like the liquefied version of, of the beads. Okay. And these are, vapor beads are being sold online? Is that where people can find Yes, them? yeah, they can get them on our website, canador.com or vaporbeads.com. Um, originally, when I was licensing these from the inventor, he, uh -huh. he made it for cigar humidors. But okay. um, after some playing around, I messed with the composition of the beads to get it so that um, the humidity can ma be maintained a little bit lower. Okay. Um, so, it, so cigars obviously higher humidity and cannabis lower humidity. So uh, I rebranded his invention so that you can use it for either now. Cool. And these, I mean, okay, so if someone does feel like $150 full on Canador is not their jam, vapor beads, I'm looking at them right now. I'm like, it doesn't even make sense to not have this. This is like very accessible. Yeah. If you're, if you have your own humidor or you want to do it yourself, even, yeah. Um, we, we have all the elements for you to make your own as well. So, you know, uh, in the beginning I created kits, um, like do it yourself kit. If you just have a humidor box, yeah. here are all the things you need to make your own Canador, you know, like, cause I realize it's not going, you know, not everybody wants to spend 150 to 200 bucks on something like this, which yeah. is fine. You know, like if you've got your own method or your own personal shoe box, you can still turn it into a humidor if you want. Right. I love this so much. This is very interesting. So as you're, um, you've kind of built this company up, it sounds like it's going at least pretty well. Like you're on a good trajectory at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah. Would you say so? Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> I have to at this point. <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no turning back now. There's yeah. no turning back now. <laughs> You're like, I am in this. I'm in yeah. this. Uh, so what, uh, what are you looking forward to? What are you looking forward to in the industry? What, what do you see? I can see for where I think that these two products could go um, as the industry is going. What do you see? What's your hope? What do you think is your biggest opportunity for growth at the moment? Yeah, well, it's that's a difficult thing for me to say because, like I said earlier, no one really even knows about me or this product yet. I mean, I've granted I've been around for a long period of time, but I haven't gone hog wild on advertising. 
um, okay. like in the big magazines. Right. Um, you know, that's very expensive. So if you blow your wad in one shot, like that's it. <laughs> You're not going to have enough money for any sort of reorders. You know, the things that you need to sell to keep the lights on. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, as much as I want to go hog wild, I really kind of want to wait until federal legalization. Okay. I have no prognostications about that. I don't know when. Um, I respect that. I, you know, I, I, who knows? It's, it's it's probably very it's been very frustrating for a lot of people, but yeah. you know now when I kind of think about this next phase of Congress and how it's made up, um, I just don't really see anything really getting done. Um, it, it, it's and it, and it, it could be, I mean, look, this the, I don't I certainly don't want to get political at all whatsoever, but it plays an important role and. It's a huge role in our industry of politics. Right, right. And so the Democrats definitely had it stacked and never really acted on it. And there were some, what, the Safe Banking Act and, and things like that have kind of bubbled up to the surface, but it's kind of doing this up to Senate, back down to House, up to Senate, back down to House. So, um, you know, you can't say, oh, well, you know, all Democrats are, are in office, like, this is going to be easy. It's going Well, that didn't happen. So now yeah. we've got... Um, now the house is 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 completely broken up. I don't even know. Like they're focused on completely different things right now. So yeah. uh, that's why that's why I just plainly don't know. I really don't know. And I wish I could be more optimistic, but I'm not. I, I haven't really been for quite some time because, like I said earlier, you had one full party having basically a supermajority that had been touting for a very long time about cannabis, you know, right. legalization. And I certainly agree with their efforts, by the way, to expunge records and mm -hmm. get nonviolent drug offenses out because that that's a waste of money, time and energy. So I agree with them there, but look, they had all day to do this. And here we are still twiddling our thumbs, yeah. <laughs> wondering. I, um, so Okay, so basically, lots unpacked, lots unpacked there. <laughs> a lot unpacked. <laughs> so you, okay, you're kind of scaling internationally at the moment. You're still selling online, yeah. uh, and federal legalization. That's where you think things will really take off for your products. Basically, is what you're saying. I yeah, and and I'm not willing to go like I said, hog wild with new capital investments or expansion until okay. that because. You're being what more they, than your what they always say, like, it's always darkest before dawn. Like, I'm sure there's going to be, like, a few people that just get nabbed for no reason. They'll be like, ha, see, we got them. Right. <laughs> you know? It'll be like, oh, you were so close to the finish line. <laughs> and then they legalize, like, a month later, and you're dealing with the court system because, I don't know, someone just decided, like, they wanted to make an example. I hear um, that. <laughs> I'm not uh, saying that's me or my business. I'm just saying like, that's going to scare people right. into going, I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> There's right. too much at risk now. There's a lot. Yeah. What would you, uh, I know you said you don't have necessarily the entrepreneurial spirit or, or organically entrepreneurial mind. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't made up that way originally. I kind of grew into it. Okay. So what would uh, your... What would your advice be? I think they, I know this. I know this. There's a lot of people who want to get into the industry. There's a lot of people who, you know, they're not even sure which part of it they want to get into. It's very difficult for them to learn about. But let's say they have some idea that they think makes a lot of sense. That's an ancillary product or service mm -hmm. or something like that. What, based on your journey, what is your advice to that person about, the things that they should consider and what their first step should be. Oh my gosh. Um, I mean, a very big one is certainly um, finding the right partners, whether that be uh, a different firm altogether that's investing in you or um, friends or family, whatever. Um, don't just do it because there's a big check or you see do, you're, you're blinded by dollar signs. Um, 
that that is it can be misleading. I'm not saying like it, it's not a good thing. I mean, if you can find an investor, an angel investor, or a venture capital firm that is writing carte blanche, which I don't think is really happening anymore. <laughs> I think the I'm there to dream now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the screws have on the all finances financial system altogether is is tightening as we speak. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think that's going to happen anymore. Those days may be numbered, but um, just being navigating that water can be kind of tricky mm -hmm. um, because in the beginning you need capital, you need it plain and simple. Like that is the one thing you need to start anything. Um, blood, sweat, and tears can take you so far, but you need, you need to pay your vendors. You need to pay everybody to keep the lights going. Yeah. Um, you need to pay, pay people to sell. You need to pay merchants. You need to, you know, the whole system. It's very difficult um, to navigate uh, just with blood, sweat, and tears alone. You do need capital. Um, and being very prudent with that and very careful with that uh, goes a long way. I know that's a very basic thing that's kind of like, duh. But it's easy. But, uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. when you're an excited entrepreneur at the beginning, it's easy to get carried away and to be like, money, cool. And next thing you know, it's like, you took on too much capital, you spent too much money, you tank. It happens all the time. So it seems, yeah, yeah common sense, but I think it's a good point for you to make. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, just constantly be mindful yeah. of your bank account. It's not, you know, it's not that hard, but it's an easy trap to fall into. Mm -hmm. uh, because at, at the time, you know, again, debt was very cheap a year ago. It's not going to be cheap anymore. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's certainly easy to take out loans and, you know, give once you establish some modicum of credit, it's easy to get <laughs> more credit. But, you know, that it can be the enemy and it can choke you. So I would, again, reiterate that, A, it's not always about who's got the biggest checkbook. Uh, sometimes those partners can um, surprise you later on down the road in a negative, in a negative way. Um, and like I said, you know, be conservative, especially now as we're going into a sort of financial tightening regime where people are going to be a little bit more cautious. I mean, you got inflation is, is really high. It's rampant. So people all together, I think in the, consumer spending space are, are just going to be a little bit more mindful of what they spend. Um, so it's okay to look at things in a more conservative fashion, which is counter to the whole, you know, move fast and break things mentality that yeah. I hear all the time. And, and, and the event, especially in like, you know, the Silicon Valley sort of all of these geniuses or, you know, move fast and break things. It's like, well, if you're just starting out, <laughs> pump the brakes. Yeah. Or if you really look at it. So I I tell people this all the time. I'm like, yeah, that's a cute, that's cool, fun saying for an industry like tech. But now that we've had more years to look at it, if you look at those who moved fast and broke things, like it did not go well for many of them. <laughs> so maybe like really review if that makes sense for you as a human, you know, and for your business. Yeah, exactly. You're spot on. We are not tech. Um, yeah. And Obviously, there are software um, companies in the cannabis space, but they're pretty limited. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, tracking seed to sale sort of things. And then regulation, you know, how, how, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how much how much more I'm not saying we've we've hit a, a limit. There's there's there could be an endless limit, but we've kind of hit that stage in the overall business cycle where you got to be a little bit more careful than you did five, 10 years ago. At the very beginning. Or... At the very beginning when it was a free for all and there was no infrastructure and there was no cannabis humidors and there was no, you know, seed to sale tracking and there was, you know, all of these things exist now. So, yeah. you know, if anything, are there supportive roles to support these entities and bridge gaps and clean up the sloppy mess that happened mm -hmm. during that sort of expansionary bubble phase. Yes. So is that, uh, 
is that kind of the area you see most for innovation if you were to be speaking to someone who's thinking about getting into the space on an inquiry basis? Is that where uh, I like to say, like, yeah, it seems like we've gotten to a certain point, but in my mind, there's still room. Like, there's still room for people, still room yeah. for entrepreneurs and innovation. Do you agree? And where is that? Is that in those gaps? Oh, I, 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 there's always room for innovation. So, you know, to look at the gumball jar and go like, well, it's it's nearly filled. Like, that's not how this country works. <laughs> like, <laughs> the gumballs are unlimited. Um <laughs> The, yeah. the, the jar, the jar itself is unlimited. <laughs> um, you know, how, how, how you navigate and go about it. I, I just don't, I'm not good at prognosticating where I think things are going or, you know, I operate in such a small little niche mm -hmm. market myself that like, you know, I've got these little blinders on. So I'm <laughs> kind of like, this is my spot. <laughs> that I know yeah. That. <laughs> my little my little island is over here as, as long as Canador Island. Welcome. <laughs> You're like, um, it's lovely here. We've got a great climate. No, I personally have always wanted to step into the larger scale commercial space. But okay. again, that, that's going to require a lot of capital and yeah. uh, a big, you know, if we're talking like refrigerator size or room size. Um, and the truth is, is that a lot of these dispensaries themselves just throw the stuff in the giant plastic bags and rubber maids mm -hmm. and, you know, send them on down the down the supply chain lane or uh, to a store or. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. so um, they're not really interested in spending, you know, five, ten grand on like a, you know, ultra fancy cannabis vault. Right. Uh, they want to, they want throughput. They want, you know, they want to get that stuff in yeah. and out as fast as possible. Yeah. Um, so, you know, my, my, the road for my innovation is kind of limited. Okay. In the, in that sense. Okay. So yours is more, I hear you. Great. Like different, different styles is about where we can go with, but yeah. you know, I, I really want to focus on this year, just letting people know I exist because there's yeah. still so many people out there that have never heard of Canador or know what a cannabis humidor even is. Yeah. And I've, uh, that makes sense. I, if I, I'm, I am not naturally entrepreneurial. That's, that is where I, but okay. I had to say this when you're like, I don't know the business school would help you if you're already entrepreneurial. It does. I went to business school. Okay entrepreneurial and I was like this is great because all these technical things I didn't have to just learn like the hard way you know so accounting statistics yeah, accounting. Um, exactly. yeah accounting's a big one <laughs> like economic principles just like right. how this willingness to pay what's that you know didn't have right. to learn that the hard way um but with right. like looking at your company I'm like yeah it makes sense you don't really need to innovate you have a product that works right it's good for the consumer there's a clear benefit for the consumer the cost of it makes sense and then at this point it's just scale it which essentially just takes your like public relations marketing being here on this platform being on other platforms right. letting customers know you're there because all you need at this point is just sales right like right. you don't Sometimes innovation isn't where the growth is at for the, like, you're not at a point where you need to innovate. You're at a point where it's like, just get people to know the things here and like, they will come, you know, if you build it, they right. will come if they know it's there. That's, that's, <laughs> I, I'm glad you touched on that point. I think that's, that's really important right there. You don't always have to, you know, it doesn't always have to be this constant, we need to innovate, 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 you yeah. know, you're going to end up taking your eyes off the prize, which is growing sales. Avenue. Oh. Sales, <laughs> generate money. Make right, <laughs> right. It's got to be sustainable. Yeah. It has totally. to be sustainable. Very cool. Well, I'm really excited for you. I'm excited for this product. Um, I hope I get to experience it at some point. Are you at any upcoming shows? Do you do trade shows or any of the conventions or anything? I, I don't. Um, the expense... Uh, for me and my business seems to outweigh the the benefits yeah. um, just because I'm mainly focused on online retail. Yes. Um, that's the best way for me to, to reach customers. I know, I know that it would be great for them to see it, feel it and touch it. Because if you, if you see one of these things up close, you feel it, it's heavy, you know, it's like, okay, this is like, this has got some substance. <laughs> it's not just your run of the mill cheapy deepy. Right. Um, 
you know, little box, there's, there's a lot going on here. So I would love uh, the opportunity for more people to touch it and see it in person. Mm -hmm. But at this stage in the game, again, it's just not economic, um, you know, at at this, for the business at this time. Okay. I hear that. So where Mm -hmm. can people mostly online, they can find you. Do you have social media? Where do they find the products? Learn about them. Do you have YouTube? Do you have like, yeah. All at Canador, just at Canador, C-A-N-N-A-D-O-R, Canador. Okay. All all the same handles. Very cool. And anything else? Anything else you'd like to wrap up with? Any last messages for the people? (laughs) I know. I I don't. I don't have any parting words of wisdom. um, (laughs) Other than you know, if you're an entrepreneur and you're starting out. Keep your head down, keep the blinders on, and stay focused on your overall objective. Don't lose sight of that. Uh, Through thick and thin, if you believe in yourself, you're the only one who's going to be able to carry it out. uh, Because no one else will. You're just going to be hearing a lot of negativity and a lot of, you know, oh, should you be doing that? Uh, And you've really got to plow through that. So whatever you're doing, you have got to be seriously passionate about it because it, you're you're going to face a lot of forces that want to buck you from that system. <laughs> yeah, especially this system, man. Yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Zane, for joining me on The Edge presented by The Bluntness. I'm so grateful. Uh, check out Canador. Check out Vapor Beads. You know, you've got to keep your cannabis well balanced and taken care of. And that's what Canador and Vapor Beads are here for. Thank you so much, Zane. I hope to see you again. I look forward to seeing your product and I really look forward to watching your company scale. Thank you so much for inviting me and allowing me to share my story. Of course. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.